today is pepper sowing day. G'day there, I'm Dana from Pewakuka Valley and today I'm going to show you how I go about sowing my peppers. The first thing I do when I'm sowing any seeds is put together a seed raising mix. Now usually I will just buy a bag um, of pre-made seed, uh, seed raising mix. Today I'm going to combine a seed raising mix and a potting mix together because I only have half a bag of both. Basically what you want, especially for those hot weather crops like your peppers and tomatoes, is you want something with some nutrients in it but also something that drains really well. So I combine the potting mix and the seed raising mix and a wee bit of water and I tend to mix it in a bin because I find it a lot easier to scoop it out than scooping it out of a bag. Now people often get caught up on what brand's better and to be honest I'm not a, um, into which brand's better but I have found that the really cheap stuff um, then my plants just didn't do well after the first couple of weeks in it. I think they must have like a fast release fertilizer and then it seems to be too wood based after that. Uh, so it seems to suck the nitrogen out and the plants eventually suffer. Also I found that it wasn't draining as well as I'd like. So I have splashed out and bought a slightly more expensive potting mix and slightly more expensive seed raising mix and to be honest I found them a lot better. As you can see here they're kind of a bit more crumbly. They, you can see the bits of perlite or vermiculite whichever it is, the wee stony stuff in there. Um, and it just, it's a lot more like smaller whoop it's a lot smaller pieces it doesn't seem to clump together quite so badly so I'm just going to mix these two together and we'll fill our trays now I have opted for the organic option um, if you don't choose to do that or the other options cheaper by all means you can do that if you like this is just what I've chosen to use now in regards to trays for my peppers I prefer to use these ones here they're I think they're two inch squares and they're about um, maybe one and a half inches tall. They're known as 10 by 20 cell trays and then I have some 10 by 20 flats that don't have holes in them. Can you see that there? That these fit perfectly into which means I can then bottom water the seedlings. The reason I like to bottom water is that these seeds are quite small and if you're pouring lots of water in from the top you can displace them which means that they either float away, they might float out of the tray altogether or you'll end up with multiple ones in one seed cell. Which when you're growing different varieties in each row having a seed drift into the wrong one is actually really frustrating. So the next thing you need to do is fill your trays up with potting mix. I usually sit them inside the flat at the same time, it adds a little bit of extra structural integrity and fill them up and I use, uh, I like to then tamp them down just with my fingers just to make sure that the soil is nice and firm and then top them up a little further. I've got quite a range of peppers that I'm going to give a go this year. Last year my peppers had an epic fail and just did not survive. Um, we had a really really wet, wet first month of summer and it was cold and yuck and they just never took off and then eventually they got eaten by slugs. Who knew slugs like spicy peppers but there you go. So I've got a variety that I, uh, of different types that I'm going to try this year um, and in this tray I'm also going to put um, the tomato that I really am quite excited about, the subarctic plenty. Um, it's going to go in this tray as well. Make sure you label them because all the peppers look exactly the same when they first come up unless they have a funny looking leaf. So labelling is really really important and um, I'll take you through which ones I've got and I think I probably have space for maybe 10 or so different peppers this year so I'm just going to grow a bunch of them. Any extras I'll be giving away to friends and family anyway. There's a chance I might try and grow some in the house as well but I haven't decided about that yet but I'm going to get them started. I always always grow more seeds than what you think you're going to need because um, well you never know what's going to happen right so and then you can pick the best plants the ones that are doing the best. So I'm going to do five of each variety some of them I might even do 10. We'll see my tray is big enough for 50 plants so I'll just wing it and see how we go. Right, the first pepper I've got here is a cayenne long thin one. Um, I've grown it before and it didn't, uh, the packet that I had didn't grow what it said it grew. So I'm going to try it again and see if it is what it says it is or if it's something different. Now generally speaking with pepper seeds they're quite small um, and with seeds in general you tend to plant them about twice as deep 
as they are wide so they're not going to need to go in very deep because they're quite small little seeds so I'm just going to make a little burrow on the top just a little finger dent and put them in those and then I'll just cover them with a sprinkling of dirt once we're finished Now this is the Californian Wonder. It's quite a popular, um, just a capsicum sort of style pepper. Now this one's mulatto and I have tried to grow it once. I can't remember which one it is. I think it's the darker one that wasn't, it's sort of a dark brownie red um, that was quite good for stuffing. But I can't remember if that's that one or the other one. So I'm going to, I'm going to grow this one anyway. This one's the good old jalapeno, can't go past that. I'm hoping to grow a few of those so that I can um, do some things with them. These are the ones I'd probably consider growing inside just so I can get some extras of them. Now this is what I'm really excited about. It's called Rocotto or ro Rocotto, Rocotto, I'm not sure. It's one that I found, found out about. It's actually a perennial chili which does all right in temperate climates. So I'm going to give that a bit of a bash. Um, it's a slightly different type of plant to a normal chilli um, so well for one it has black seeds and it can't crossbreed with your normal chilies so they're good um, they won't cross pollinate each other and I'm actually gonna grow 10, 10 of these ones because I know I can find some homes for the extra plants And this last pepper I've got here, um, I actually got it from the, a neighbour. She's not exactly sure what, um, what, which one it was. But anyway, I'm going to try and grow those. It was a really nice hot pepper. Um, and it looked a lot like the sort of Thai long red chilies. So it is possible that this is an F1 cross and it might not grow to, completely true to type, but um, I'm prepared to give it a bash. So thank you Sue for that chilli, it was delicious. Actually she gave us three of them, they were all delicious. Um, and then I've got five more cells left on the end here, I'm not sure what to put in those. Leave them empty I think. So then to top off, you just put a little sprinkling of dirt over the top and firm them down. Seeds like to have a good firm contact with the soil. You want the soil to be free draining, but the seeds need to be firmly up against it so that they can absorb the moisture from it and have somewhere to send their roots. Now that they're all planted the next trick is because I started with a really nice moist mixture I'm not actually going to water them in as such because it's actually already nice and wet um, but I will add a little bit of water to the bottom tray so that they don't dry out and then I'm going to go and take them through and put them on my heated propagation table which will keep them at about between 25 and 30 degrees celsius uh, which is the perfect temperature to get these tomatoes and these peppers off to a really good start. So I'm going to try and move them in there. Um, I'm not sure what the sound's going to be like in there because the wind keeps blowing the 
tunnel house and it keeps making noise but we'll see how we go once we get there if you want more help tips and tricks and ideas and a timetable for growing your own food i really recommend you check out i've got a book called the homesteader's guide to seasonal gardening and it has all the different things that you can plant at the different seasons um, tips and tricks on getting them going there's information on harvesting, information on storing, and even some recipes in there for each of the different seasons using seasonal produce. So I'll put a link to that down in the description below. I recommend you check it out. You can get a hard copy off Amazon with it, or you can buy uh, the ebook um, just through my website. If you think you need a little more support with your gardening journey, I have a course that will take you through for a whole year exactly how to set up a garden, exactly what you need to be planting every couple of weeks. It's tailored for where you are. There's lessons on different plants, different vegetables, harvesting, planting, uh, different uh, bits of machinery, uh, tools, whatever, um, storing food all that sort of stuff and um, it's very very affordable all my prices on the website are in New Zealand dollars which for Americans like the exchange rate is brilliant on your half uh, on your side I'll give you updates as these plants grow and when we're ready I'll show you exactly how I pot them out as well. I hope you found this video really useful. If you have hit the like button, share it with anyone that you think might find it useful. Consider uh, consider subscribing to our channel. We bring you videos twice a week on growing and preserving your own food and other homesteading bits and pieces. Thanks for watching.